My name is Raghu Balakrishnan. I am professor and Michael and Catherine Burke head of the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering. And on behalf of ECE, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome you all to this afternoon celebration. As the single largest academic unit at Purdue, uh, EC has played a significant role in many of the accomplishments that Purdue has made. And uh, what you're going to celebrate, what we are all going to celebrate this afternoon is one such singular accomplishment of leadership in both the educational and research domains. You'll hear a lot more about it from our other speakers, but now it's my pleasure and honor to introduce the first speaker of the afternoon, Meng Chiang, the John A. Edwardson Dean of Engineering. Dr. Chiang is formerly the Arthur Legrand Doty Professor at Princeton University. He is a leader in networking research, a recipient of the Guggenheim Fellowship in 2014, and the 2013 Alan T. Waterman Award, the highest honor given to young US scientists and engineers. He is a co-founder of multiple startup companies and a pioneer in open online courses reaching more than a quarter million students since 2012. He's bringing an exciting vision to Purdue, and we are very happy that he's leading the College of Engineering. Please welcome Dean Chiang. Thank you, Raghu. And thank you all for coming over to warm up the uh, MSWA atrium on a somewhat chilly afternoon. Uh, and thank you for joining us on this very special celebration occasion. It is special for several reasons. It is special because of the subject matter of the Center for Brain-Inspired Computing. From hardware to software of computers and computing systems, this center will redefine the frontier of research for intelligent, connected, autonomous systems and artificial intelligence applications. And indeed, in engineer's hand, we have now the opportunity to redefine the boundary conditions of human existence. This celebration is special also because of the competitive nature of the award. And we all know that the Electrical and Computer Engineering School at Purdue has always been a premier department in the nation and in many areas among the very best in the world. And this is the first time that Purdue ECE is the lead of a winning team out of a very competitive process. And it also demonstrates, again, that the College of Engineering at Purdue can and we must aim at the pinnacle of research excellence. And finally, today is a special celebration also because of the scale and the scope of collaboration. Behind the numbers like $36 million uh, for five years stand a very intensive and diverse ecosystem of partnership, uh, including the private companies behind the semiconductor Research Corporation, government funding agency DARPA, Indiana State, uh, EDC, and cost sharing from all universities, including Purdue. It is truly excellence at scale and excellence through scale. On this exciting occasion, I'm so pleased and proud to bring on stage my ECE colleague and the new director of Seabrick. Indeed, one more break, one more very special break higher, Kaushik Roy. Kaushik. You know, thanks, Monk. Um, you know, imagine a world where you have your self-driving car waiting for you to take you home. And uh, once you go home, you have your personal robotic assistant uh, making coffee for you just the way you want it, exactly the way you want it. That's the world that we are going uh, into. And if you really think about it, the C-3PO's that uh, you know, George Lucas imagined, that's not just for George Lucas anymore. 
So things have changed. So what we'd like to do is, um, interestingly, we are already in an AI-centric world. Uh, you know, deep learning has transformed what uh, machine learning, in the field of machine learning a lot. You know, we all hear about uh, deep learning all the time these days in, uh, in the news. And, uh, and the kind of products that we end up using today uh, um, include web search, uh, include image recognition, uh, video analysis in some cases, you know, speech recognition, natural language processing, and so on. Uh, but I, what we feel is just, that's just the tip of the iceberg. The kind of applications that I'm talking about in the future uh, includes, uh, you know, robotic assistance, as I said, uh, self-flying drones. And to enable such applications, uh, there's a need to consider beyond AI. Uh, to that effect, we'll be looking at what we call autonomous intelligence. You know, what is autonomous intelligence is that a computer is not only going to perceive uh, the environment around it, it's going to reason about it, and then it's going to make a decision, and finally make some actions. So to that effect, uh, our center, the Center for Brain-Inspired Computing, is going to develop new algorithms that can potentially uh, be very, very close to what the brain does. We'll be learning from the brain. They'll be, also impl uh, they'll be implemented in a hardware which uh, is going to be also brain-like. You know, from whatever we have learned from neuroscience, it turns out that the architecture of the brain is uh, quite different from what the conventional architectures that we use today, and that's a von Neumann computing architecture. You know, von Neumann computing architecture, in general, we have the memory and the processing unit separate. And there's something called the memory bottleneck, and that causes a whole lot of problems. Uh, in to achieving the kind of performance that you'd like to have. And it turns out in the brain, uh, you know, the uh, memory is distributed and the computing in some ways is done in the brain. So we'll be actually rethinking architecture so that the algorithms that we develop as a part of the center can be implemented in such architectures to really reduce the order of magnitude, you know, efficiency gap that exists today between the brain and the computing systems. Just to give you an example of it, uh, you know, we are all familiar with the fact that back in 2016, uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, the Google AlphaGo beat uh, the Go Master 4-1, and that was actually quite an achievement. Uh, the, but the question is, at what cost? You know, it turns out that if you really look at the energy consumption of, uh, or the power consumption of the machine, uh, that was about you know, 200 to 300,000 watts. Whereas the brain? It really does it in about 20 watts or so. So this is a huge efficiency grab. And to that effect, uh, we'll be really developing architectures, we'll be developing uh, you know, algorithms uh, and the software, and we will be applying those uh, algorithms and architectures into uh, applications which are uh, self-flying drones, uh, you know, personal robotic assistants, and so on. Um, to do this, we have uh, a team of uh, researchers from all across the United States, um, and they're the very best that we could find. They include universities all the way from the West Coast universities like Portland State University, uh, University of Southern California, Arizona State, and the East Coast we have uh, uh, MIT, uh, Princeton, uh, Georgia Tech, uh, Penn State, and uh, in the Midwest we have, uh, of course, our very own Purdue. So we are really, really excited uh, to do this research and uh, in a collaborative fashion with our uh, partner institutes and also with uh, SRC and, uh, uh, and DARPA. Uh, and um, uh, you know, when we were writing this proposal, uh, this was a large proposal. And in order to uh, really write the proposal, it's almost required the help of the village. And, and we did get that help. Uh, it turns out from Purdue. Uh, so we'd like to also thank um, uh, the College of Engineering uh, for really providing us all the help that we needed. Uh, in particular, actually, I would like to uh, thank Mung for all the support and the enthusiasm that he has shown. It's been uh, amazing. Uh, on the other side of things, uh, from the cost sharing point of view, uh, you know, Melba Crawford played uh, a very important role. Uh, so did uh, Raghu Balakrishnan, uh, our department head. Um, Christine Jewell. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Lynn Daman um, uh, for all the help that uh, he provided during our proposal writing. Uh, we always ended up making the last minute changes. 
Um, you know, I found that uh, I never met Christian Sherman, hence uh, he's here, uh, she's here, and, um, uh, you know, uh, did the uh, contract for uh, the, the budget for us. Um, and uh, I'd also like to thank, uh, you know, Jim Krogmeyer and Robert Frosch for uh, providing us the space. Um, IEDC, that actually certainly played a very, very important loan in matching, and they provided us the money. Uh, to actually set up uh, an intelligent systems lab, which we'll be actually working on very soon. And um, I'd also like to finally thank uh, Christian Babek and his team, uh, uh, and uh, also Christine Malavanda for all the, uh, <coughs> uh, all the help during this uh, process. Uh, Suresh Garimela, we had a lot of discussions uh, uh, with him, uh, and, uh, and uh, also, uh, I'm, I'm probably forgetting some people, I'm sure, uh, but uh, during the contracting time, uh, and it, the contracting really did take a long, long time. Uh, I'd like to also thank uh, Laura Gray and uh, Ken Sandel. Uh, so with that, um, it's, we are really, really excited, and uh, we look forward to um, uh, doing some really exciting work uh, in the near future. Um, I, uh, it's my distinct honor now to really uh, to introduce Purdue's president, uh, Mitch Daniels. Uh, probably the number one joy of my job is the chance to come and celebrate the achievements, uh, the spectacular achievements, which are pretty routine at Purdue University these days, but there's nothing routine about today. And I want to just start by saying to Dr. Roy, to Raghu, uh, to all your colleagues, uh, how deeply grateful we are. This, you have brought an enormous honor, equally an enormous responsibility, uh, but, a, but a tremendous uh, honor and recognition to our university. I'll, I'll mention in just a second. I'm very personally interested, I've been excited to watch this proposal move forward, kept my fingers crossed. Um, we're all intrigued about autonomous vehicles, Kyle Sheik. I've, I, I've said for some time, I want them to perfect the autonomous car one day after they take my driver's license away. <laughs> and so speed up, because that might not be too far off. I don't know. I also must confess uh, that uh, uh, when I try to play Go, it uses many more than 20 watts. And, and uh, uh, but uh, we, we've all been reading every single day about artificial intelligence and all the ways it's likely to change our world, all the possibilities that it will surface. And much of this work's already going on at Purdue, but now in a very, very visible and very important way. Um, some of the most important and noteworthy uh, research is gonna happen here. Uh, I hope everyone uh, already un uh, uh, got the sense of what an achievement this is. Um, you know, just a few months ago, uh, uh, Purdue was chosen um, by the NSF for an energy research center. It was the first time in uh, 40 years. And we celebrated that as well we should. This is the first time ever. Most people here, I suppose, know what the uh, consortium uh, is all about, the, the Sem National Semiconductor Consortium, and has a sense about what the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, is about. I can tell you that I have, in past lives, worked with both of them. Every grant our people, our faculty compete for here is, um, is a very fair and tough competition, I'm sure, but there are no, there are no competitions tougher than the ones that Kaushik and his colleagues have just succeeded in. These are very unsentimental people. They are interested in the hardest practical realities they expect to see on behalf of the great corporations who pool together to create uh, SRC. And certainly I can tell you on behalf of the people at DARPA whose responsibility is the national security of us all in a dangerous world. They are only, uh, they will only award their projects to the very, very finest and most promising uh, researchers and institutions. So we are deeply honored that you, have, uh, that you have brought this achievement to us and can't underscore it enough. I, uh, finally, I wanna thank our friends from the state. I have to, I am constrained to mention the 
In my previous employment, the first action of the first day was to create something called the Indiana Economic Development Corporation, a, a public-private corporation later uh, enacted in statute. And on that day, we said that our objective was to make Indiana, um, to lift Indiana to be one of the most attractive places on the planet for people to invest and to create new learning and create new opportunities. And they've done a great job in that organization over the ensuing decade and uh, uh, their, their contribution, their support, their recognition of the importance of research like this and Purdue as a world leader in it. Um, it was instrumental, I think, in this success, and we want to say thanks to them. So finally, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say that um, uh, the whole university, I hope, will pay close attention to this work and will uh, not only join in celebrating it, but AI in ways that Raghu and Kaushik just um, have presaged a little bit is going to change our world in ways we cannot imagine and most, I'm sure, will be for the infinite good of humankind. But there may also be some very serious um, downsides to guard against and consider. And the, f the thought that the front edge of so much of this will be happening right here, I think, gives us a, a second responsibility, which is for those of us who will never be capable of contributing directly to the work of Seabrick, to pay close attention to it and to think about the all the ways in which we make sure that this is an unmitigated good for all of humanity and, and that any uh, problems or dangers that it brings with it uh, are managed effectively. What a wonderful set of missions for our institution, uh, all because of the folks who have made Seabrook possible. So I've rattled on, but only because I'm so very excited about this and have, have been so hopeful that this day would come. And now, uh, for the next several years, uh, Let's, uh, let's, let's do the very best work of which Purdue is capable and show those, those tough-minded people who have uh, selected us that they made exactly the right choice. Thank you. See, I'm back here again. And uh, when I was talking, you know, as when I was thanking and I, uh, you know, I said that I must have forgotten. I said that I must be forgetting some people. And indeed I did. And it's the most important people. And that turns out to be Anand Raghunathan. <laughs> Without him, the center would not have been possible. You know, absolutely not possible. We spend endless nights discussing at the center. And, uh, you know, our families were really upset about it, uh, but Thank you very much. Without Anand, it would not have been possible. And finally, I also wanted to thank my students. Uh, we spent, again, you know, many uh, sleepless nights uh, discussing and getting the write-ups done. So thank you very much. I knew that I forgot some of the uh, most important people. So thank you again. Well, thank you, Koshik, and thank you, President Mitch, uh, Dean Monk. Uh, thank you all for joining us this afternoon and helping us celebrate this, uh, the launch of Seabrick, uh, a great jewel, uh, one more jewel in Purdue's crown.